What's going on guys? Today we're working on a 2003 Honda Accord with a 2.4 liter four cylinder engine. Customer complaint is a check engine light. They're not reporting any drivability issues. Uh, one thing I'm noticing, just you know, initial cold start of the car, idle speed's pretty high and it has not come down. Uh, possibly related, our next step is going to be to pull fault codes and see what we're working with. Alright guys, so I have the vehicle identified. 2003 Honda Accord 2.4. I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. We're just going to pick all others on this. I'm mainly just concerned about what fault codes we have here. I'm going to go into the engine menu. This is an automatic transmission with AC. And I'm going to go to trouble codes. And what we see is a PO420, catalyst system efficiency below threshold. So uh, basically what this code means, guys, is that the engine computer has determined that the catalytic converter is no longer performing its job and reducing emissions. A lot of people see this code and they think, you know, it means that the cat's clogged or restricted or anything like that. That's not the case. I mean, this vehicle revs fine. You know, I don't feel any issues as far as that goes. So we're just going to focus on this cat code. And uh, what we really need to be concerned with and what we need to look at when we're dealing with these is we need to look at the oxygen sensors. So I'm going to get that data menu pulled up and we'll take All a look. All right, guys, so I have this oxygen sensor data pulled up here. Uh, we're looking at three different pits. We're looking at RPM. We're looking at the downstream sensor to voltage. And we're, you know, this vehicle has an air fuel sensor, so we're just looking at that air fuel sensor milliamp number. Um, really, what we need to be concerned with as far as dealing with this CAT code is this downstream sensor. What we'd want to see is we would want to see it, you know, pretty flat lined. We don't see, want to see a whole lot of up down oscillation in it. And if we look to it right now, what we can see is that this sensor is moving up and down at a pretty pretty consistent pace. We can also notice that the data refresh rate is uh, pretty slow on this vehicle. I mean, we're just dragging along. Um, I've got the engine, you know, just idling right now. We haven't been running it for very long. Um, I haven't rubbed it or anything like that. If we look to this air fuel sensor milliamp data pit up here on the upper right, we can see it's just flopping around the 0, 0.0 to 0, 0.1 milliamp number. What we really need to do is we need to update these scales. To do that, I'm just going to snap the throttle. So what we can see is we generated a response in this air fuel sensor milliamp number. Now I'm not exactly sure what this milliamp you know, measurement means, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull up another data pid as far as this upstream sensor goes. And that's going to be this, this air fuel lambda. This is what I'm worried about. So I'm just going to select that data pit and go back to our menu. So I'm going to graph both that and the downstream sensor. I'm just going to put that in a graph view. Yeah, actually, that's a little big, so let me uh, let me go back to this list view. And we'll just blow these menus up. So as far as this air fuel lambda number goes, what it's, what it's basically doing is it's commanding a certain fuel trim correction to the engine computer. A number of 1.0 indicates stoichiometric, you know, a good air fuel ratio of 14.7 to 1. Um, so any number directly at 1.0 is reporting that the current exhaust mixture is stoichiometric and therefore normal. So what we can analyze and see by this number is that we're currently under fuel control. You know, this engine's running at stoichiometric, it's running well. And this air fuel lambda is reporting that to the engine computer. When this number goes above 1.0, as in the case we just saw, is at a number 1.01, what that's doing is it's giving a command to the engine computer to add fuel. So anytime we see that number go above that 1.00 range, that's a command to the computer to add fuel. Anytime it goes under the 1.0 range, you know, we can see it comes down to 0.98. That's a command for the engine computer to reduce fuel. And that kind of gets into some fuel trim stuff. We're not going to get into that right now. What we're mainly focused on is troubleshooting this PO420 fault code. If we look at this downstream sensor, we still see it switching up and down at a pretty consistent rate. This isn't what we want to see at all. What we want to see on these downstream cats is we want to see a nice flat line signal. So we don't see that right now. Uh, you know, you think we can call a cat at this point? I gotta tell you, I don't, and there's a reason for that. 
we just started this car. It has not been running long. We've not driven the vehicle or anything. So we have not heated up this cat enough to make a call on it being bad. On any normal car, when you first start it up, you're going to see downstream sensor oscillations until that cat reaches its normal operating temperature. Because we haven't met those conditions yet, we cannot overanalyze this number. What we need to do is heat this cat up. So what we're going to do to do that very simply, very effectively staying in the driver's seat is I'm just going to hold the engine RPM up to about 2,500 to 3,000 RPM and then we're going to watch this number. This is going to accomplish two things for us. One, it's going to get the switch rate of this downstream sensor you know, a lot higher. And two, it's going to get this cat warmed up so we can really evaluate how it's working. Is this cat working or not? So that's our next step. So, so all I'm going to do, guys, do is I'm just going to increase this engine RPM speed up to about 2,500 to 3,000. You can watch this RPM ped on the top left. So just holding this RPM up. And I want to do this for a good, you know, minute, two minutes. We want to get this cat real hot. We want to get it working well. You know, a catalytic converter cannot catalyze if it's not hot. You know, so we can't. We can't call a bad cat based off of this O2 oscillation we're currently seeing until we give this cat a chance to warm up and get hot. So that's what we're doing. We'll come back in about a minute or so once I feel that this cat is warmed up. Alright guys, so I've been on this for about a minute now, just holding the engine around 3000 RPM. I feel pretty good that this cat's at operating temperature, so I'm just going to let off the throttle and we're going to see what sort of response we see from this downstream sensor. I let off the throttle now, we can see our RPM PID show us that. And now with a good cat guys, generally what we want to see is we want to see a flat line number on this. You know, we need to give it some time after uh, after letting that idle, uh, or excuse me, letting the engine RPM come back down just to allow the engine to stabilize, get back into closed loop fuel management. Uh, just give it time for the fuel trims to stabilize. So we're just kind of keeping an eyeball on this heated oxygen sensor voltage number here. Um, I can already see that the number is starting to stabilize a little bit. We can still see a little bit of up-down oscillation. So we're just going to continue watching this. You know, when it comes to calling a bad cat, guys, uh, you know, we want to be 100%. Some of these can be upwards of $1,000. You know, when you're talking an OE catalytic converter, you know, there's no excuse for us as technicians to not take the steps necessary to be 100% on a call like this. You know, if you're, if you're a DIY type person and you're, you're dealing with this issue yourself, you know, why not be 100%? You know, these, these things are usually expensive. We don't want to just throw cats in cars and not fix them. So we can see this number is stabilized uh, somewhat around this uh, 70, 60 millivolt number. And I got to tell you guys, I don't like it. I don't like what I'm seeing. We still see some up-down oscillation. We're not going full rich and lean, but we can see that it wants to. You know, this, this O2 sensor is just just waiting to peg below that 450 millivolt threshold and start start really full on switching. We can see these oscillations are getting larger as this cat starts to cool back down. Um to be honest with you guys, this is this is pretty much enough to call this cat. There's some things we need to think about when we're when we're potentially diagnosing these these catalytic converters. One of them is exhaust leaks. Um, if you have an exhaust leak upstream particularly of this downstream sensor it's going to skew how that sensor operates that's not the case on this vehicle guys typically when i see a sensor that's being affected by an exhaust leak we'll see that sensor drop lean for long large amounts of time and you know usually when you have an exhaust leak on a vehicle you can hear it um, i don't hear any exhaust leaks from this car um, we're also not seeing any clear signs that an exhaust leak is affecting this sensor so you know kind of strike one against this cat at this point we can see as we cool down even more here you know our oscillations are just you know they're steadily increasing in amplitude so it's not looking good for the cat in this case um, there's a few other tests we can do 
to kind of uh, really truly pinpoint this one of them is going to be to actually smoke test the exhaust for leaks or maybe use a soapy water solution to do that i think i may show that to you guys you know just to make sure you know we want to be 100 percent when we sell this customer this cat um the other thing we can do is something known as a propane enrichment or an or a oxygen storage test i actually learned about this test from uh paul danner over at the scanner danner channel you know big plug to him he's a great instructor you know, definitely check his channel out and I'll throw a link to his channel in the description and maybe a couple of his videos where he does this. But uh, what we can do is we can do that test and we can, you know, kind of evaluate the oxygen storage uh, capacity of this catalytic converter. So we may do that too. Um, maybe the easiest first step is just to do a quick check on this thing for exhaust leaks. And, uh, you know, that's pretty simple. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the car positioned on a hoist. We're going to lift it up and we're just going to do a audible inspection for exhaust leaks in front of and in the you know direct vicinity of this sensor. So that's coming up next. All right, guys. So we're underneath the car here and what we're looking at is the catalytic converter. Sorry about all the hammer noise in the back. This is a working shop. If we look, we can see the shift cable right here. Directly behind that, we have this flex pipe, and directly behind the flex pipe is the catalytic converter. As far as this downstream sensor, its location is here, and it is bolted right into the converter housing, okay? So as far as this exhaust leak check, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. What we're primarily worried about is leaks in front of the sensor. Um, one of my favorite methods of doing this is to simply use a hose like this, put it up to my ear, and then run all along the exhaust and listen for leaks. Already did that, guys. Saved you guys the trouble, and I didn't hear anything. Some areas to focus on and pay real close attention to are flex pipes, for one. They are you know, huge, huge suspects as far as exhaust leaks go. You know, I'm in North Carolina, and we have a lot of rust, and uh, you know, typically where I find them is in these flex pipes. They just completely rust out. Another area we want to pay attention to is flanges like this, you know, this front flange of this catalytic converter. Um, we also want to pay a little bit of attention to uh, exhaust leaks downstream of the sensor, but really the further away you get, the less of an effect it has. My general rule of thumb is about two feet. I'll listen for exhaust leaks. Um, on this vehicle, like I said, I already did that. I did not find any leaks. Um, yeah. So. That's just the hose method. Another method we could use is we could smoke test the exhaust. We could come back to the tailpipe here and we can install an adapter with a smoke machine and we can actually pump pressurized smoke into the system and do a visual release. That also works. You can use that in conjunction with soapy water. You know, hook a smoke tester up and spray everything down with smoky water. The combination, combination of smoke and bubbles will kind of help you ID these leaks. I'm not worried about it, guys. I don't hear a leak. I don't see a leak. And, uh, you know, we're just going to go ahead and move forward. At this point, I'm confident in calling this catalytic converter, but we're definitely going to visit this oxygen storage test, uh, you know, just to show you guys how that works and what a bad cat looks like. Um, not sure if I'm going to get to film the repair on this one, so I'm, I don't know if I'm going to get to uh, show you a good one, but uh, I'll definitely link you over to Scanner Danner's channel and, you know, show you a video that he did that really explains the test very well. As I said, he's an excellent instructor. All right guys, so I uh, failed to mention, but uh, one more test we can do to test for exhaust leaks, and I've had a lot of success with it, especially smaller leaks, is to use some sort of flammable substance, preferably something non-liquid like propane. And what we're gonna do with it is we're actually going to spray along the gasket surfaces of this exhaust pipe and while we do that we're going to monitor the downstream oxygen sensor voltage value and what we're going to look for it is it to go rich stick rich uh, when we find a leak we should be able to stick that oxygen sensor rich by adding exhaust to the leak so i haven't i haven't seen anyone do this before but as I've said, I've had a lot of success with doing that to identify very, very small, minute exhaust leaks that you may miss otherwise. 
Um, you can also do it with brake clean. I would suggest being very, very careful around a hot cat using brake clean. But uh, I'm going to get you guys focused on the scan tool, and then I'm going to spray this exhaust down, and we're going to see if we see any see any changes in this downstream sensor. All right, guys. So when we're performing this, uh, when we're performing this test, looking for this exhaust leak by using propane or some some other flammable liquid to uh, drive this oxygen sensor rich. This is what we're doing. I've got an assistant. What he's using is a propane bottle, and he's just spraying propane along the flange of this exhaust gasket. And this is really how this test works. You know, obviously, as I said before, we're going to focus on areas like the flex pipe, any sort of joint anything like that but uh, while he's doing that we're going to take a look at the scan tool and what we're looking at is this downstream oxygen sensor voltage number and what we can see is we cannot drive this sensor rich with this test you know obviously we want to monitor this value while doing this test in different locations we've already done that guys we do not have an exhaust leak on this vehicle so our next step at this point is going to proceed to the catalyst storage oxygen test so that's coming up next. All right, guys, so this is the setup for the oxygen storage test. What I've done is I've removed a vacuum line going directly down to the intake manifold. That vacuum line feeds the brake booster. I've installed a propane bottle into that vacuum line. And what I've got pulled up on the scan tool are three things. I've got short-term fuel trim for this bank, bank one. I've got the downstream oxygen sensor voltage number. And I also have the equivalence ratio of the air fuel sensor. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hold the engine at about 2,000 RPM for about a minute. We want to get the cat nice and hot for this test. And then I'm going to let the engine idle. After we have the engine idling, I'm going to turn this propane bottle on. So we're going to flood the intake manifold with fuel. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the short-term fuel trim number. What should happen is this should go way negative as this engine computer attempts to compensate for this rich condition. And it's going to pull fuel away. After it does that, and we'll give it a little bit of time to go, you know, nice and nice and negative. We're going to turn this valve off, and what that's going to do is it's going to induce a huge lean condition into the engine. The engine computer's already pulled all the fuel away. It's pretty much running off the propane we're giving it. So once we close this valve, everything is going to go lean. The purpose of this test is we're going to see how long it takes for this downstream sensor to make the transition from rich to lean. And based off of that number, we can kind of make a call based on the oxygen storage of this catalyst. You know, a good catalytic converter should be able to capture and store oxygen. And what we're really doing with this test is we're evaluating its ability to do that. So I'm gonna hold the engine speed at 2000 RPM and I'll bring you guys back once the cat's nice and hot and we can start the test. All right guys, I just got done warming this cat up. We, seal, we see we still have our setup with the propane bottle here going to the intake. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch this short term and we're gonna watch this downstream oxygen sensor voltage number. So I'm about to turn this valve on. I'm gonna turn the valve on now. And the car stalled. One second. All right, I got the car started back up. The engine idle speed is restabilized. So we're going to watch this number, try this again. I'm just going to slowly open this valve this time while we keep an eye on this. What we want to see is we want to see these fuel trims go way negative, and we do. Our downstream sensor voltage number should peg rich. As we see it has, you know, we're floating around this uh, 0.96 millivolt number. If we look at our short terms, we've completely pulled fuel from this engine. We're at negative 30. So we're pretty much just running off the propane here, guys. What I'm now going to do is I am going to turn this propane off very quickly. And we are going to look and see how long it takes for this bake one sensor two number to drop lean. What we're gonna base that off of is the equivalence ratio of this air fuel sensor. This being an air fuel sensor, it should react very, very quickly to this very dramatic, very quick lean condition that we are going to induce by turning this valve off. So I'm gonna do it in three, two, one, now. I've now cut the valve off. 
and you can see that our bank one sensor two number has dropped lane at this point. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause this capture and then we're going to analyze it and determine how much time it took for this downstream sensor to transition from rich to lean. All right guys, so I'm back in the driver's seat. And now what we're looking at is the collected data that we, uh, that we got from this oxygen storage test. And uh, I've got the capture pause, and what we're gonna do is, is we're going to use our cursors to determine our off point where we turn the propane off. So I'm just going to use this little arrow here, and all I'm doing is I'm just bouncing over, and I'm using the equivalence ratio sensor as my turn off. The reason I'm doing that is because this is an air fuel sensor and it's going to respond very very quickly to these changes. Um, something to remember when we talked about it earlier positive numbers on this equivalence ratio what we were looking at earlier was in the OE menu it was the lambda number. Any number over 1.0 is going to be a rich command. So we can see that this current equivalent ratio number here is 1.37. This is a rich command in response to us cutting the propane off during our test. So we can use this point in time with confidence that this is the exact moment that we shut that propane off. So it looks like we got uh, our response started around this frame here, frame 2140 or so. Yeah, about 2140 is where, where we started. I'm actually going to zoom this in a little to make this easier. So yeah, right at, right at frame 2140 is where we started this. So now I'm going to pull this O2 Bank 1 Sensor 2 number back in frame. having some issues with the scan tool guys this is somewhat hard to do while looking through a little camera screen I'm gonna get that there we go that should be a uh, that should be sufficient so we said before that frame 2140 was where we cut the propane off and if we look at this bank one sensor two number here what we see is that this sensor dropped lean pretty much right at that point so what this what this indicates and what this kind of tells us is that this cat cannot store oxygen and you know that's really what's wrong with it um, this is a confirmed bad cat um, there's some variables to doing this test over the scan tool one of those variables is we don't have time what we have are frames I don't know how long a frame is um, you know we really have no way of knowing the ideal way to perform this test is going to be to use a lab scope or a graphing meter something to where you can display this voltage over an exact amount of time and uh, that would really you know give you a little bit more precise of an answer as far as how long is this storage event here from where we turned the fuel off at frame 2140 to where we dropped lean here just shortly shortly after that um, some additional issues with doing that are being that this car has an air fuel sensor we can't really use a lab scope on the uh, the air fuel sensor to determine when that rich lean transition took place the reason being is how they operate I'm not going to get into air fuel sensor operation right now but uh we can't really do it on this car. We're pretty much limited to using the scan tool if we want to sync that up and know exactly when we turn the fuel off. So uh, in a nutshell, that's the test. Um, it's something I haven't done much. Most of the time, you don't really have a need to do this test. Um, as far as the in and outs and the science behind it, I think Paul, you know, Scanner Danner, he does a much better job at explaining all of it than I do. So. Like I said before, I'm going to throw a link to his video in the description going through testing a vehicle like this and using this oxygen storage test to test for a bad cat. Um, so yeah, link for that in the description. As far as this vehicle goes, it's going to get a cat, guys. That's the only fix for this. The vehicle has 171,000 what I'm sure are hard miles on it. 
So uh, yeah, the recommendation in this case is going to be a new catalytic converter, and that's going to take care of this car. So uh, any questions, guys, you know, feel free to comment. But uh, as far as this, that's it. Thanks for watching.